I'm Doug Edwards, Director of the Psychiatry and Behavioral Health Learning Network. And today I'm joined by Dr. Brent and Andrea Turnipseed, co-founders of Roots Behavioral Health, which is an Austin-based organization offering innovative and holistic mental health care. Dr. Turnipseed and Andrea are presenters at this year's SANA Symposium. And today we will be discussing ketamine treatment models. Welcome, Dr. Turnipseed and Andrea. I'm so delighted you could join us this morning. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. So Dr. Turnipseed, I'm going to begin with you. As interest in psychedelics grows, uh, frankly, so does interest in ketamine. What type of patients do best with this therapeutic option? Yeah, no, thanks. Good, good question. So if we look at the bulk of the evidence that's been accumulating, you know, using ketamine and treating mental health conditions for the past 20 years, the evidence is most robust in treating depression. And when I say depression, I mean major depressive disorder, bipolar depression, and that even includes treatment resistant depression, which is really exciting because there's been a huge unmet need in treating depression for a long time. Now, if we look beyond depression, there's some recent exciting research that's come out of Mount Sinai in New York, and clinicians there have found that you know, a handful of ketamine infusions might be especially effective in treating PTSD and trauma. So that's exciting. Uh, looking beyond depression and PTSD, there's also been some exciting studies out of Columbia University in the past four or five years showing that ketamine leverage with psychotherapy may be really effective in treating alcohol use disorder and cocaine use disorder. So, you know, all these conditions together are things that are typically very difficult to treat in our field. So very exciting stuff. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, growing interest uh, um, about ketamine. And I know many providers are either looking to offer it themselves or make referrals. Andrea, you know, there obviously is growing interest in ketamine and there's frankly more ketamine providers opening. What should a clinician look for in a potential referral source offering ketamine services if they, the clinician feels they have a patient who might be a fit? If a clinician feels that they have a fit for ketamine services, I would look for an established uh, clinic in the community. And if there was any information from colleagues that it was you know, well run, and most importantly, that, that they're working with other therapists. If they have therapists on staff, that would be ideal. If not, at the very least, that they're working with therapists in the community to collaborate and coordinate care or allow therapists to come in and join the patient when they're doing a ketamine infusion or injection. Well, it's really about getting to know different providers in your region, clearly, um, and learning what kind of therapy they provide. Yes, and you know, obviously any referrals from friends or family that it has worked well with, I would, I would go with that, just, just as like when people find a psychiatrist, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's very personalized and unique. And so not every clinic is going to be for every person and every style. But in, in my opinion, I think that having a therapist really enhances the treatment. Moving on to the patient, uh, Dr. Turnipseed, you know, we're, we live in an era where anyone can get medical information online, which certainly have some pluses, but definitely has some disadvantages as well. And what do you find are some of the best ways to educate patients who might benefit from ketamine um, more than just suggesting they do a Google search, for example? Also a good question uh, because, you know, misinformation kind of abounds online. It's important to find like the right resource. So I usually steer people towards actually a low tech uh, resource initially, which is just two books. Um, the first of which is called Ketamine for Depression. I think it came out about 2015, 2016. It was written by Stephen Hyde, who's a psychiatrist in Tasmania. And it's written in a language that is easy to understand for the general public and clinicians. So in fact, I recommend it to patients and I even recommend it to clinicians who are interested in learning more about referring you know, to patients uh, for ketamine treatment or for clinicians who might be interested in you know, working with ketamine themselves. I even get the book for our uh, new clinicians at Roots that we onboard to give them a good broad background on ketamine and the history of the treatment. Another uh, book that's a great resource, a little bit more of a deep dive on ketamine is uh, called uh, The Ketamine Papers which was uh, edited and partly written by Phil Wilson, who's a very important early pioneer in our field. Uh, Phil's a great psychiatrist out in the Bay Area. So the ketamine papers and ketamine for depression are great places to start. 
And if people want to look online, I'd probably steer them towards the American Society of Ketamine Physicians, Psychotherapists, and Practitioners, or it's also called ASKP3. So that's an organization of providers, but they put on great conferences where people, you know, exchange and share new ideas in our field. Um, patients, the general public can attend them, and they put on webinars as well for the general public at times and clinicians. So um, that's a great resource online as well as those two books. And Andrea, anything you would like to add on that topic? Yeah, those are all great resources. I'd also say MAPS is another great organization that um, has put out some resources and as well as conferences that we actually spoke at um, 2019 and they have YouTube videos um, in regards to our conference and other organizations and links to things that are doing or places that are doing ketamine. Well, thank you, Andrea and Dr. Turnipseed. I'd like to thank you for spending your time with us today. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you can join us to learn more about the latest in psychedelic research and treatment strategies for mental health and addiction professionals at the inaugural sauna symposium, which is a virtual event taking place this September from the same team that brings you Psych Congress, the evolution of psychotherapy, and the national conferences on addiction disorders. To learn more or to register, visit sanasymposium.com.